after I had three surgeries um, to try to fix the issue, I had a question about, God, am I not faithful enough? Am I not believing enough? Faith not big enough? Mm-hmm. It's even more faith now if you believe that I'm going to restore it all, even if it was cut off. Because as an educator and as a believer, um, I see God strategically putting people in place. Um, yeah. They took prayer out of schools, but they didn't take prayer out of us. And he's putting us around it. Um, our school system to affect change, um, to show his love, to be his hands and feet in a place where um, Satan has tried to get rid of us. Mm-hmm. We're there. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. Today I am joined with a guest host, and that's Mr. Eric Jackson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Not everybody sees your face because your job at the church is always kind of in the background, right? I am always in the background. I uh, run sound so for live streams specifically. So uh, if it sounds good, that's me. And if it doesn't sound good, that's still me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, uh, I've been doing that for a few years. I think our online sound sounds really good. And I, I think you've that. gone up and up and up. And, so God, thank you. God. I've had a lot of help. Yeah. And our guests today are the Joneses. Um, we have Brenda and Lonnie Jones with us. How are y'all today? Doing good. 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 We're glad you're here. Yes. yes. Y'all a lovely couple. I call Lonnie, Lonnie J. Lonnie J. <laughs> Lonnie J. Lonnie J. Lonnie J. We're glad you're here. You guys have been here for what, 14 years. Is that correct? 14 yes. years. Wow. 14 years time. at Heritage. They're big parts of our worship team and our sound and broadcast team. Yes. And uh, been on yes. the short list for a long time to come in and sit down. So we're glad that you have an opportunity. We're glad that we get to spend this time with you. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Um, now tell us a little bit about your family. I did say you've been here for 14 years, but um, tell us about your kids and y'all do at church you want to go first you want me to go? sure um we have like tanya said we've been here 14 years that feels really weird sorry i know <laughs> um 14 years we have three kids um our youngest is marcus he's graduating this year high really school excited. graduate know, yeah right? um, a lot of cool. he came here when he was four so yeah wow. Wow. they have grown up here in this church um been blessed by just being here on so many levels and um just um all that's been poured into us as a family um it's just been amazing it's been such a blessing being here at heritage all this time (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah and you're on our worship team so people see you a lot on the stage sharing your lovely gift with us i am I am. Um, I think I've been on the worship team. I was trying to calculate the other day. I think maybe ten years now. Wow! Um, oh, wow! Yeah, it's been a while, okay. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am happy and blessed to be a part of such an amazing team. And um, every Sunday, we're looking forward to just all the, the good things that God is doing um, through us as a team and through our church family and just. Um, it's just been an awesome ride. Yeah. And yeah. and Lonnie, you're also a part of the sound team as well. Yes. 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 Uh, you are one of the people that have taught me what I know, which I appreciate everything. And yeah. um, for those that don't know, they go to the church. Lonnie would, came to me. Uh, I was sitting in the uh, sanctuary. This was back when we had um, an, um, our former worship leader. And he came up to me. He was like, so when are you going to get up there and uh, run the sound? I've never talked to you about that <laughs> at all. <laughs> Said nothing and was waiting. You know, God told me to wait. And so you were a part of the, you know, I guess um, I won't say ignition, but, you know, the start of it a little bit yeah. for me to be like, all right, God, so what are we saying? Are we, am I going to do this now? And then, uh, you got up there and taught me the rope. So appreciate having you there oh, yeah. um, for sure. So if the audio sounds good, it's it's because of Lonnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it sounds bad, it's all on Lonnie. It's all on Lonnie. No, no, yeah. If it sounds good, it's yeah, him and a couple of other people that are also on the sound team. Yeah, y'all are great. Um, so y'all have um, grown up in in church, from my understanding. And, and so could y'all just share a little bit more about like your background and how you know were you always with Word of Faith or uh, were you in something? Or that can you just help us get a, get a better understanding? Put some context around right? yeah, yeah. context right? Um, I'll say this we both grew up in Baptist church. Um, 
Brenda's dad was a pastor, and my granddad was a pastor, and they knew each other. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know that, but they did. No, so they were plotting when y'all were kids. <laughs> and no, they were just doing ministry. <laughs> they didn't do ministry. God had a plan for us when yeah, we were kids. Yeah, yeah. And um, so just growing up in, in that that atmosphere, my granddad taught me a lot. Um, I learned a lot from him um, after he was done preaching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the lifestyle after, you know, he stepped down from the pulpit, then the other lessons began. Yeah, and um, just growing up in that atmosphere, I had a lot of wisdom, a lot of wise people around me that was that would share with me the mistakes they made, mm-hmm. and they found favor in me that they wanted to keep me from making the same mistakes. Mm-hmm. So true. it was a lot of wisdom behind it, yeah. and uh, you know sincerity. So they were very sincere yeah. and open about their mistakes. Um, so I grew up in a Baptist church, but it just didn't seem like what we call traditional Baptist church. Um, not where I'm from anyway. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. So I used to sing in the choir. Mm. People don't know <laughs> couple, that. Couple they, singers oh, they used in to sing in the choir, yeah. And, um, I, I could, I was loud, right or wrong. I was loud, <laughs> 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 but, okay. uh, then I started running sound, uh, ministry. And um, it just went from there. Um, my first lesson in that was, hey, brother, can you come over here? I'm going to show you how to run sound, okay? Here's what you do. You see this channel right here? Like, yes, sir. All right, well, um, this works like this. Mm-hmm. Now, the rest of the channels work the exact same way. Mm-hmm. And they kind of left me to that. That was it. That was my training. Oh, wow. And I had to learn the rest of that all on my own with the yeah. God of the Holy Spirit. yeah. Um, and I know right. I'm going to tell this story, and I'm going to send it over to Brenda, let her tell hers. But when we came here, uh, as far as sound, like we didn't join church right away. We sat for like a year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, Brenda, I think she joined the praise team, and then um, I started running sound after that. Mm-hmm. But there was a time when I was running sound, and I was like, really feeling what it was sounding like, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I was up there by myself in the sound booth, and I asked God a question. I said, God, um, I don't know about this. Like, is this me? Am I doing this for me, or am I doing this for you? Because Mm -hmm. I like it right now where it is. Mm -hmm. And his answer to me was, he says, I'm doing it for you. So the whole time when I'm thinking I'm doing something for him, he's saying, no, this is your desire. So I put you here because there's no way I would have ever thought I'd been running sound ministry at this church yeah. or even running sound for Jerry Savelle. Like, yeah, yeah. It didn't even, right? I yeah. didn't know who he was at the time. So how did I end up here? Yeah. Wow. Um, and then I'm going to tag Brenda. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Um, I'm a preacher's kid. My, my dad pastored here in, in the city for, um, over 40 years before he went to heaven. Wow. So um, deeply rooted mm-hmm. um, in, in, in the faith. Um, I actually was introduced to Heritage of Faith through um, Gina Lewis, who um, we worked together for many years. And she would always talk about her church. And we were actually in transition uh, from our church. We had been um, visiting and just helping some friends um, as they were planting churches and doing some other things. Um, and one day, I just I think I came by myself. Um, I just said, okay, well, I'm going to come visit. And it was unlike anything I had ever really experienced. And um, I loved it. And so I go home and I'm like, you know, we got to visit this place. And it took a little bit because we were, we kind of had our hands in some other things for a while. Um, but eventually, after a while, we came, and we just kind of kept coming. Our kids loved it. Um, such a family-oriented church that really yeah. drew us in yeah, yeah. Um, to have our kids um, be in a place mm-hmm. where we could trust that they were safe and that they were learning about God's Word and that they were just being poured into and loved on um, the same way that we were being in the big church, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, and that meant the world to us. And so we're so grateful for that. And so um, we did. We sat for a while before we, jo- we joined. And um, eventually we, we decided to, to make Heritage our home. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, what's one of the biggest things that you would say um, from serving in the positions that you've served and are serving in that God has, has taught you in, in the time frame? Like one thing is like, man, God, I don't know if you, if I would have learned this had I not been in this, uh, serving in this capacity. Well, I'll say um, just because we've grown up in the church and for me growing up in the church, I've worn a lot of hats and roles um, from being an usher, being um, children's church. I even worked in children's church for a little while when I first started here at Heritage because I wasn't sure that I wanted to be on the worship team yet. Um, and so I did that for a little while. And just being a servant, I've always, we've always mm -hmm. had that in us to be servants because that's what we grew up and that's what we were taught right. to be. Um, but being humble, I think is the biggest thing. Um, when you're serving people, um, just being humble um, because you never know what people are dealing with. Um, and right. we are carriers of God's glory and his love. And if you're serving, then that's what we are serving our people, mm -hmm. the love of God. Mm -hmm. And so um, having that mindset um, with anything, you know, all that we do, not just at church, but um, in our regular lives mm -hmm. and just having that, that attitude and that posture that we're here to serve, that we're um, humbly submitting ourselves um, to whatever God is calling us to do in that moment, if it's giving a smile, if it's providing a meal, if it's mm -hmm. giving a hug, whatever it is, we're serving in that capacity um, to the best of our ability, the best way that, that we know how. So, mm -hmm. That's good. How, how about for you? That's a good answer. <laughs> like she, she, she yeah. answered it all. She <laughs> did. She did. Like a, um, I, one, one of the things, I can't say it's the biggest, but one of the things is... Um, is is to really be obedient. Um, not that we wasn't obedient, but it's just the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. And uh, so for us, we were just learning more about God. We were switching from knowing that God exists, in a sense, and learning that knowing that God wants a relationship with us. Yeah. And so when we came here, you know, Pastor Justin was really good about that. That was one of the things that we really love is that he talked a lot about uh, having a relationship with God, which he still does today. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a, like a really thing, a really uh, dominating fact that he was doing at that time, uh, like maybe a series of things he was just doing. Mm -hmm. But I just learned to, or we just learned to be obedient and trust God and just became stronger in our faith. Mm -hmm. Like, so we wouldn't like doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's not like we were out. We don't have that story. Sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys were raised in the church. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was more about just being more faithful and, and submissive to what God is saying. Yeah. And, and just being more in tune uh, to the capacity that we knew at the age we, when we came here. Now, obviously, we're not there anymore. We're better at it. But uh, when we first came, yes, that was that was one of the things that we just – we grew into. Uh, Eric mentioned earlier, but this was this was really your first experience in a Word of Faith church. Is that right? Yes. How was that transition for you, coming from growing up in a church where perhaps the culture or the te the teaching was different than you had heard before? Uh, for for me, um, my granddad when he preached, he was a pastor, and he was not a traditional preacher by no means. And he was not afraid to tell what the truth was, mm -hmm. even if it was what the rest of the culture was not doing. Mm. You know, so he was a he was definitely a trailblazer, um, and he made a big impact in in Fort Worth. Like he he started a lot of churches. He just didn't get, if you want to say, the world recognition or a big recognition. Uh -huh. But um, so from him. Like, he just taught me, for one, if I learned anything from him, it was to be a servant. Like, my granddad would give you everything he had. Mm -hmm. He had thir 13 kids. Uh, <laughs> wow. And uh, took care of all of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, and even with that, people would come up to him after church and ask for things, and he would give it to them. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, to learn that a servant's heart is a big thing. As a matter of fact, I'll say this. Um, uh, today, when I was in service today, I just wrote this down. It's a, a servant uh, being called to serve mm -hmm. other servants. Mm -hmm. um, so um, 
in a sense, what that just meant to me was Jesus, although he is our king, that when he when he comes, he's not coming just as a king. He's coming as a king because he wants to serve. And he's looking for us so he can help serve us. Like, it's no different than when he came and he washed the disciples' feet. Mm-hmm. Right? So we don't think about a lot of things, I think, sometimes. But um, I don't know why I'm mentioning that right now, but I am. So it's just... Uh, Having a servant's heart, I just really love that part about who we are. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you know, I, I can hopefully not say anything bad, but uh, we'll, we'll get into discussions about things just because we both are servants. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you want? What do you want? You know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. But, uh, <laughs> I understand that. Though. Yeah, but we're both yeah. servants, so it's like I'm trying to serve her. She's trying to serve me. <laughs> so how does that work? So, But anyway, it's just fun. Um, you're trying to serve each other, and it's not the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's true. Get that's your true. own yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of a healthy relationship, yeah. a healthy marriage. You guys are examples of that. I know. I know. People may have questions as they watch this, but it, um, you've you've walked through some uh, a little bit of a challenge with your eyesight, right? Yes. Yeah. Will you just so people have some context of what that is, and we can all be in agreement with you mm-hmm. over the healing process of that? Okay, um, I don't even know where to start. So I would just start with um, what I was told. And my my retina has detached from my eye. And what that means is um, when your retina becomes detached, that the light that your eyes receive no longer is sending a signal to your mind. So your mind can't understand what it sees. It just... It's, it's trying to, but it just can't do it because there's no right. light. Right. Yeah. Um, so in a nutshell, that's pretty much what happened to me. So I am believing God for for my healing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can say, you know, I'm, I'm hearing God a lot different than I used to. Yeah. Um, and I see things a lot different than I used to. Yeah. Um, and I know God is doing things for us. I mean, it happened at a time. Where it's never a good time for that to happen. We don't want it to happen. Right. Uh, but it didn't shake my faith. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't shake our faith. Like, not only Brenda, but my family, my kids, my mother, like everybody's, everybody at the church, everybody's praying for it. Right, yeah. right. For healing. So, it, if anything, it brought us all close together. Yeah. Um, so, I just, you know, want everybody to continue to keep praying, keep the faith, and God is still working things out for all of us. Right. You know, it's not just me. You know, mine is just sight because it's easy to see. Right. But other people have other issues that's unknown and unseen. Well, that's what I think is beautiful about being able to put it in a, a platform right like this. One, a lot of people are going to come in agreement with you mm-hmm. in faith for your eyesight uh, to be completely and, uh, and utterly whole. Um, but secondly, we're all in process. We all have things. Just like yes. you said, just because right. yours is a little bit more visible to to the world around you doesn't mean other people aren't struggling with things just that need just as much faith to overcome, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, sometimes we always talk about the victory side, but it's from the, you know, from praying to seeing the manifestation that sometimes you can provide some context to what that, what that has been like for you yeah. and how the Lord has spoken to you and your family um, as you've walked through that. So it, in light of that, uh, what is something that the Lord has, what has he told you to help you, I don't want to say cope, uh, but to help you understand where you're at right now and to continue to help you progress in faith? Has there been any word that he's given you or anything that he's just shared? It's like, all right, God, I appreciate that. That's going to keep me grounded to continue to move forward. Um, I mean, it's probably a countless amount of things. Um, I have a journal at home that I'll write down a lot of things that he shares with me. Um, so I can say for being grounded, it helped me to understand something that I was battling with. Mm-hmm. And that was um, having surgery. Mm-hmm. You know, I had three surgeries and, you know, there were people came up to me, you know, and saying, you know, your faith isn't strong enough. That's why you haven't received your healing kind of thing, and you're just like, okay, well, I hear you. 
but uh, something God shared with me was after I had three surgeries um, to try to fix the issue, I had a question about, God, am I not faithful enough? Am I not believing you enough? Is my faith not big enough? I must have seen size faith. Like, what is the deal? Mm-hmm. And um, so with that being said, you know, he took me to took me to the word and he said, look, he said, look at Peter. And when um, they came to capture Jesus and Peter was going to fight for him mm-hmm. and he cut the soldier's ear off. And um, I said, okay. And then he said, okay, so now look closely. He said, I put his ear back. So um, one of the challenges I used to have was, was it a mistake that I had surgery rather than believing God for it? Although I was, you know, a certain part of me was making me think I wasn't believing enough. Right, I get that. So when he showed me that, he said, so you still believe this is even more faith for me to go back rather than, you know, you thought you was going to get the healing from man. Mm-hmm. It's even more faith now for you to believe that I'm going to restore it all, mm-hmm. even if it was cut off. And the cut part to me was surgery, by the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's how I viewed it. And I said, okay, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to trust you. And uh, that's, Amen. that's been one of my stories mm-hmm. that God has shared with me. Well, we celebrate that we will see the full manifestation Amen. of that. Amen. We don't have oh, any yes. doubt, and Amen. we stand on the word for that, and we stand with y'all. So that's Definitely. what the church family is about, right? Coming alongside, yeah. believing, locking arms and faith with people. And so we thank you for the opportunity to be able to stand alongside with you Amen. as it relates Amen. to thank that. You. Yeah. Because yeah. nothing is impossible. Everybody. Nothing is impossible. All that's thing 100%. Is impossible with our God. So. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brenda. I wanted to transition a little bit and talk about what you do for a living because um, as much as you all pour into the church, you also pour into the children of our Fort Worth community. You've been a teacher for how long? Um, This is my 14th year in education. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And all in Fort Worth, right? Yes. 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 And what are you doing now with that education? Um, So I spent 10 years in the classroom as a fifth grade teacher, Mm -hmm. Um, and then now my role is an instructional coach. So I teach teachers, Mm -hmm. uh, provide provide professional development, and um, just training for them as they are um, uh, perfecting their craft, you know, in the classroom with their students. So, um, and I support the administration. So I'm kind of the middleman on campus. So I'm working with everybody at wow. the same time is what it feels like. Like a blended um, role of like, a, uh, you're an administrator, kind of? Technically, no, mm-hmm. but oh, okay. um, so yeah. I have some administrative roles. Okay, mm-hmm. all, right, all right, A lot of hats. You wear She's a lot of hats. She's qualified to be an administrator. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, I am. Um, being in the schools is a different place, you know. It's it's a it's a whole ecosystem of its own. It's the science teacher coming out of me. All right, let, let it <laughs> um, let the yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the world of education. You know, um, there's a lot of good things that are happening because our kids are they're learning and they're growing. Right. Um, but there's a lot of unrest and a lot of um, just dissatisfaction yeah. with our education system, not just here but just all across our nation. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's just so important for us, you know, as a believer, that I'm in that space and understanding my calling and my purpose there. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't necessarily understand it when I first started teaching. My mom told me for a long time, you're going to teach, you're going to teach. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's my calling, mm-hmm. Mom. <laughs> um, but one day, I'll never forget, I went and I told her, I said, Mom, I think I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get my certification. I'm going to teach. She's like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, she, she always is my, one of my biggest encouragers, and I'm so grateful for her because we need that as educators. We yeah. need um, people to encourage us because there's so much um, crazy stuff that does come out of us, come out at us. And um, we wear a lot of hats, yeah. mm-hmm. um, a lot of negativity um, surrounding those hats sometimes. Um, our kids need a lot. Our, our teachers need a lot of emotional support. Right. Um, we provide a lot of things for them. But sometimes they need just people to care, yeah. right. people to love on them, just like our kids need people to love on them. Mm-hmm. Because when they come to that classroom, they have to put 
their daily lives aside so that they can focus on um, the 20, 22, however many little ones are in front of them that are vying for their attention um, every single day. And so in my role, I get to support them. I get to be there when they need someone to talk to um, um, outside of my role in providing, and of course, curriculum support. Um, sure. But I get to be that that listening ear for them to help them um, troubleshoot and work out problems, you know, that they may have or encounter um, on campus and sometimes on a personal level as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'm grateful for that because as an educator and as a believer, um, I see God strategically putting people in place. Um, yeah. They took prayer out of schools, but they didn't take prayer out of us. And he's putting us around in um, our school system to affect change. Mm-hmm. Um, to show his love, to be his hands and feet in a place where um, Satan has tried to get rid of us. Mm -hmm. We're there, and we're working, and Mm -hmm. we're moving, um, and we're being the light um, um, more than people probably realize. Mm -hmm. Um, The teacher that, you know, that may um, do all of the things that um, combing the hair, providing um, some chapstick for a student or shoes or whatever the little things a hug for a kid who's been up all night long you know because there's some other things going on in their family situation um just providing a space a safe place mm-hmm. for them to go and to know that they are safe and they're loved um and that they can get their needs met while they're there and so our educators are so special to me um in that respect and i'm grateful for the position that i have that i can be that support to them yeah. um, as they are um, supporting our kids and trying to do their job to the best of their ability. Um, yeah. I have a family. I come from a family of educators. So my mother, father, and grandmother were all teachers. Wow. Um, dad was a math teacher. My grandmother, I think she taught English. Um, and then my mother was an English teacher and administrator, principal. She now has a doctorate. Um, and I'm saying all that to say when she was doing her dissertation, she was in um, a school in the hood, lack of a better term, you know, but it was definitely in the hood and it, it was not doing well. And when she got there, um, she read through the dis- she went through the dissertation. And part of that was understanding how the lifestyle of what's going on with the child affects how they learn, which yeah, and she told so me true. about that. I had no clue. Um, all students were being taught at middle class level when you had some under the middle class level mm-hmm. that had issues that prevented mm-hmm. them from mm-hmm. cat- yes. grasping those right. middle class understandings. And it's not that they weren't smart. It was just that they had life challenges. Mm-hmm. So to have someone such as yourself that's serving those that serve kids that are possibly going through that is very important. Uh, and especially someone that who is a believer that could be listen to what God says and not even... Uh, Pastor, I think I think that was Pastor Carlo. No, no. Um, someone said earlier that uh, you know, s- speak not even you're 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 being Jesus or talking yeah. about Jesus without even speaking it or yeah. saying mm-hmm. Jesus. Right. Really, absolutely. Because God lives in you, and you know, he, the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something. And just if you're doing anything through love, you know what I mean. You are serving, just like Jesus washed feet. You are serving. You're right. you're doing that. So I think it's very powerful that what what's going on now in the um, uh, I don't, don't want to say the economy, but the atmosphere of just school systems. We don't know what's going on with the children. So I think it's very powerful. And it's, it's amazing to me how your backgrounds were servants, right? You know, uh, mm-hmm. you grew up in that, and that was modeled for you. And now you're serving the servers. You know what I mean? And Lana, you were saying that. Um, uh, it's crazy how that connects in, in, in my yeah, mind, yeah, but right. you was, you're you're still doing it in a role. You're serving the servers that serve those people. So yeah. praise God for that. You know, continue to let God use you. You know, yeah. in, in in that way. Right. Yeah, you, you guys are both living examples of what it means to walk walk the walk, really. And in your respective environments, you really are doing that. And so we appreciate that Amen. about y'all. Yeah. yeah, thank you. We're just um, we're just trying to do what we what we know in our hearts because of the God in us that we're supposed to do. So we don't really know anything different. You know, yeah. we've grown up in it. We've been in it our whole life. And so this is what we know to do. It's deeply rooted in us. Um, we pray that it's deeply rooted in our kids, that they've seen us do that um, so that we can be the light. Mm-hmm. You know, everywhere we go, it doesn't matter where you are. You're supposed to be the light at the gas station, at the grocery store, mm-hmm. um, looking for those opportunities to be a blessing to others. And so um, 
as others are always they're a blessing to us because it works both ways um and so we're grateful for all of that so after have been here for 14 years and being really uh well grafted into our family. You guys know that the the message of the house is to be winners, making winners in life. Um, when you think about your life and where God's put you in the classroom, pouring now into those who pour out um, and helping with sound and being an instrument in our house, what would you say that statement means to you? You both can answer it. Whichever one wants to go, go first. first. You want to go first? Sure. Um, okay, sounds good. <laughs> 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 you know, making winners in life, number one, as a winner is someone who's victorious. Um, and um, as believers in Christ Jesus, we are victorious. God, um, Jesus secured that for us, um, our victory. And um, making winners in life, because we are victorious, then we can go and help somebody else. Amen. Um, Amen. We are blessed to be a blessing. Um, we are carriers of the glory. Of God, we take His word to the world um, in our lives. We are. Um, someone said this morning we're talking about being just like in a living epistle. We are sometimes the only Jesus that people mm-hmm. see, and so um, you know, let my life be a testimony right. to the goodness of God, um, so that they can see His goodness and be compelled to want to know more about His goodness, which opens a door for a conversation. So let me tell you about my Jesus yeah. and what he did for me, mm-hmm. and he can do the same for you. Yeah. And so um, that is making winners in life because when we realize we are winners, then we can help be that light to others so that they can experience the abundant life yeah. like we have. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tag. Good job. Mike, yeah, mic <laughs> drop for sure. That's a good answer. Um, making winners in life. Um it's to me is accepting Christ first of all. So um, it's hard to be a winner when you're fighting a battle that you know you're gonna lose, or you don't know you're gonna lose. Mm-hmm. Meaning, um, if you don't have Christ, like you don't know that you're already losing. And when you accept who Christ is, then when we, what we know is we've already won. I don't have to be a winner. Now I already know I'm victorious. So I can go on and I can tell everybody and walk in the way that I'm supposed to walk. So they will see the light, like Brenda was saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tell my kids to um, tell myself and my kids, but it's just something God shared with me was about um, God is able pres- to present you faultless before his presence mm-hmm. with exceeding joy. And to know what that means, like, even if you feel like you might have fallen short, or if you have in the past, when you accept who Christ is, then he's presenting you mm-hmm. as his son, as his daughter, with great joy and happiness. Uh, and that, to me, when you know what that is, then everything else doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That makes you a winner. Um, so you can walk into a person can walk in their life every day and be victorious and know it. So no matter what Satan try to throw at us, try to come, and he does. <laughs> yeah. But as long as we keep reminding him, you lose. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm a winner. You're the loser. Deal with it. <laughs> 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 I know it and you know it. So yeah. while we even talking about this, let's move on. Get thee behind me. Good. It's powerful. <laughs> so both incredible answers. This is the best part about this is hearing these answers yeah, firsthand. Dan, Dan always says that yeah. he's excited to hear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it is a you get different perspective. Yeah, for sure. Just appreciate y'all. Y'all are an amazing couple. Thank you for being here. Thank you for guest hosting with yeah, us. Well, thank you for it was so me. fun. I appreciate it. And I'm excited to hear and learn more. So it was great. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this week's of Winning Conversation podcast. Uh, catch us next Friday for the next episode. Go get them.